Hi guys! So in this video I'm going to show how I turn these lovely sprues that you guys have been sending in to me into the world's first sprue burger with cheese. So the reason for making this is basically just to show that you can make anything out of sprues. Obviously consult with your doctor before eating any kinds of plastic and this may contain nuts. Well the guy who made it certainly contains nuts that's for sure. As always it's good to have a reference photo to work from. And again I've kind of printed this out the size that I want to make this burger. To make this burger solid would obviously use too many sprues. So I'm going to build a little framework inside. And again the good old pot of grout comes in handy. Well the lid anyway. So that's going to give me the rough size that I'm going for. And now it's just a case of getting all your sprues. Cut them up so you've got some nice long lengths. And as always the important job of cutting off those nibbly knobbly bits. As nothing is wasted here all these little nibbly knobbly bits are going to go into my little nibbly knobbly bit drawer and they'll be used later on to make ooey gooey sprue stuff. So similar to how I made the orc stomper framework I'm just going to cut the sprues up into equal lengths and then place them around the circle. Trimming them all at a slight angle, just so they make full contact with each other. And there we go, once they've all glued together, we've got one nice circle. But obviously as I'm going to make a framework, I now need to make another one. And once that's done, I can then get on to making some upright supports. Just to start making this flat framework into a more 3D framework. And then using the helping hands to make things easier. I can now glue the top part to the rest of it. As with most of these sprue builds, having a good framework certainly does help, as once this is all dry it's certainly very rigid then. As I'm going to be using lots and lots of ooey gooey sprue stuff later on in this build, I'm just going to cut up loads and loads of sprues now, just as they need a good old 8 hours in the acetone to melt down. And while those sprues are melting, I can get back to just finishing off the framework by just adding a few more lengths of sprue here and there, just to get the overall shape that I need. And there we go, that's the framework all complete. Now I can take one of my flat panels. There are several videos guys where I show how to make these flat panels if you haven't seen them already. I'll leave a link in the description. So this flat panel is not fully hardened. Which means it will wrap around this shape really nicely. And obviously the great thing with these panels is they can just be cut normally with a pair of scissors. So I'm going to encase the whole of this framework in these panels. So several hours later it's fully encased. Still doesn't look anything like a burger yet but that's fine as the next part will start to add a bit more shape to this. And for that we're going to take some ooey gooey sprue stuff that's been left for around about 5 hours or more. So lots of the acetone has burnt off now, but it's still soft enough to be able to mould and push into whatever shape you need. And just to say guys, before anyone mentions that obviously I'm not wearing gloves, I have had a good old look up on acetone and its effects on skin. And in small measures, the worst it will do to my skin is just dry it out as the acetone is evaporating in the air. I've also found out that it's not harmful if you were to, uh, to drink it. Not that I would suggest ever drinking this. And I will be doing a video soon on ooey gooey spruey stuff and acetone and the effects it can have on your skin and in the air. So look out for that one guys. So it's basically a case of just covering the whole of this burger with the ooey gooey spruey stuff. And again the good thing is it's kind of like a plasticine so it can be moulded, shaped and in this case turned into some patty meat. And there you go the texture of the meat doesn't look too bad there just by prodding it and moving the, uh, the ooey gooey spruey stuff just around a bit. So I'll just keep on repeating the process until the whole of that's done. And 
and then just moving on to other areas. Again, been able to cut up this ooey gooey spruy stuff after about five, six hours is really nice. So now I'm just going to cut out some triangular parts, and these are going to be the bits of cheese that are just sort of ooing out the side of the burger. And yes, technically that would make this a cheeseburger, but I prefer to say a sprue burger with cheese. And there we go, I think it's coming along pretty good now. Now I just need to make up some little onions and the ketchup stuff just to go in between the burger and the bun. So I really am pleased with like, the overall shape of this burger as it really is a nice big chunky monkey. Which I think even I'd have problems trying to complete this, this bad boy. I'd certainly give it a go though. And for the ketchup, basically I'll just put the ooey gooey spruey stuff into the syringe and then squirting it out. Just as this gives a more natural feel to ketchup coming out of a pot. And there we go, it's almost done, so I'm just going to give it a light sand in just to smooth out certain areas. And then it's ready for the last part, some bun seeds. And I'm kind of cheating, I'm making mine nice and round, using my hole punch, and the same method I use for making rivets. And then it's just a case of randomly placing these all over the top of the bun. And the good thing here is it's so easy making loads and loads of these rivets, or bun seeds, that I can put loads over this thing quite quickly. And there we go, I'm pretty happy with this. Now onto the final stage, let's slap some paint on this bad boy. So I've gone for a red primer, and now I'm just going to use a large brush to get the bun painted. So the great thing about using this large brush is I'll be able to feather the colour of the bun so it's darker in the middle and then goes lighter towards the edges. So it's a fairly simple paint job on this, but it certainly is making this look more like a burger. In fact, I might have to go off and get some mince pies. Don't forget to leave some comments down below, guys. Let me know what you'd like to see me make next, as I certainly think it's now possible to make absolutely anything out of sprues. So why not think of the craziest thing you can and set me a challenge, guys. So now it's almost done, the last thing I'm going to do is paint everything but the bun with some gloss varnish, just to make it all shine. And believe it or not guys, this is the kind of thing that food photographers do, just to make things look more appetising. Obviously you definitely wouldn't want to eat them with that kind of stuff on them, but it does make them look good. It's certainly starting to look good enough to eat now, yum yum. And there we go guys, the world's first sprue burger. Let me know what you think of it in the comments. Don't forget to hit that like button. And if you can share this wherever possible guys, it would be much appreciated. If you are new here and like what I do, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell as I'm trying to produce at least one video every week. As well as doing some live streaming of me building stuff and just generally chit chatting. As always, thanks to my patrons for helping support the channel. That really does mean so much to me as I am hoping one day this could be my full time job. If you're not already a patron guys, go and check that out, it only costs you £1 a month, and for that you get access to all the behind the scenes stuff of what I'm currently working on, and it really does help this channel out so much. There are some more videos on the screen guys, give those a click, check out more of what I do, and again where possible share those ones too guys. Okay that's it, bye for now.